Like, what was your crap when you started? 520. Holy s***. Yeah, I, mean, I was in 400. Okay. So there's someone worse than you. Yeah. yeah. Could people just open up LLCs every day and just get credit? Yeah, you can open up an LLC every 24 hours. Also, I got a friend right now. I believe my friend has 72 LLCs. <laughs> I know Amex. I've seen some crazy, like someone oh, spent like man. 200K on a swipe. Yeah. And some, the highest limit I've seen was like uh, 900,000. Four, four different American Express credit yeah. cards at like eight to nine hundred thousand dollars. Uh, spend all of that and retire. <laughs> Leave the country. You got paid back, but. Welcome back to the Digital Social Hour, guys. I'm your host, Sean Kelly. Got three guests for you guys today, Mogul, Boone, and Smitty. How's it going, guys? What's up, what's up, what's up? Nice. Thanks for having me. For sure. I'd love each of you to give a quick intro, and then we'll jump into it. Yeah, so I'm Smitty, uh, and I'm specializing on the credit side. So anything to do with getting your business capital, getting your business funded, uh, anything anything about leveraging, turning credit into cash in any type of way or form, that's what I specialize in. Hmm. Uh, I'm a master art on the credit side, be able to leverage it, use it, get access to the fund and things like that. And um, that's me. Nice. Yeah, my name is Rob Mel. They call me the young mogul. Um, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Born and raised <laughs> in Brooklyn. Okay. I specialize in teaching how to go out there and buy self storage facilities. So I teach them how to do it with no money down strategies, creatively coming up with the capital in different ways to go buy assets and more importantly, um, being able to make multiple streams of income off one acquisition. So that's yep. just what I do. Nice. My name is Boone, Diaz Boone, Philly. I'm a real estate investor, but I specialize in helping other individuals buy single family properties, duplexes and triplexes, but more importantly, how to do it with using someone else's money or not having a lot of money or not having credit at all. When I first got started, I had like the worst credit on the planet. So I was able to build a huge portfolio without needing credit in the beginning. So I show people how to do the exact same nice. So what was your credit when you started? 520. <laughs> I went to, uh, I went to yeah. Penn State Avenue and they kicked me out and they charged all the back tuition back on me and it went to collection. Holy Starting out the gate, I was, I yeah. was shot. Yeah, I, was, I was in 400, bro. Okay. In 400. So there's someone worse than you? Yeah, <laughs> I, ain't, I, I, I paid at least one bill on time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I ain't, I ain't never been that low, so I paid with that you one. You paid no bills. I paid one bill on time. All right. So is that why you started Fund Your Freedom? Yeah, so um, more more of that was because we're showing people how to get into real estate, no money out of pocket, and then my guy shows them how to go ahead and get access to $100,000 in business funding. Right. So we put the get, put come together to really get that to really fund your freedom. So that funding buys hard assets. And those hard assets like rental portfolio mm. pays money every single month and that money can go ahead and clear out your bills so imagine you got a car note 500 a month mm -hmm. the average american says that they don't have a car note anymore or they don't have to pay rent anymore or they have to pay car insurance anymore shoot the average american says that they have an extra thousand dollars a month that would change everything for them so right. we use those that funding to buy assets and those assets pay your bills which all essentially mm. funds your freedom. That's a good partnership because yeah. you help them get funding, right? Yeah. So the problem, what has been for me is they'll come to me and they'll learn the credit game to be able to leverage it to get funded. But then they, the second component would be, okay, all right, Smitty, I learned the game from you. I can get funded 100000 200000 yeah. All right, what do I do with the money? So then now I had to do some work, you know, and then collab with people who are doing things that my people can invest the money in. So right. what's perfect enough to invest your money into real estate? Mm -hmm. And then so my guy, Boone, do the you know uh, the residential, and then we do the commercial with Moog. So now we have two components of what my people can do once they get funded. So now we have a, like, we got like a two-year blueprint where mm -hmm. you can be, you know, build yourself a seven-figure portfolio if you follow the steps from, from beginning to end that now you can get access to the money. Now you can invest it on the fund. Now you can go into the big dog game with the commercial real estate. But now you have a real blueprint plan and you're not just stuck with, oh, I got this money. What do I do? Or go do some dumb stuff with it. We can do right. some smart stuff with it. What made all you guys come together? Because it seems like you're good at what you do and form like a super team almost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, as you start to grow and you get into business and you're doing different things, you realize that there's not a lot of people around you that's motivated. There's not a lot of people that's going to help you grow. And I was in New York, the only one that was making six figures, seven figures. Hmm. And I needed to get around new people just to help me get to that next level. Right. And um, so I went on Instagram, right? And I seen Boom, and he's in Philly. So Philly, New York, that's just a two hour drive. Yeah, yeah. So I sent him a DM um, a few times, right? I sent him a DM a few times. <laughs> uh, he left you on red? 
Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> he responded, but then he's like, yeah, we're going to talk today or talk tomorrow. You know how that like, goes just kind of yeah. a back and forth, right? But we finally was able to get together, and um, we talked about it. We spent some time together. We put together a class, and we had, I don't know how many people we had in that class, over 100 people in the class that we did. Okay. And it was so much value, so much impact. And from that point on, we kept doing more things. And then me and Smitty, we was actually in a mentorship together. Nice. And I seen how much he was doing, right? Just off of ebooks and getting people funded. And, um, you know, we just said, let's do something together. You know, let's put together, you know, Fund Your Freedom so we can collab, bring our talents together. And that way we'll have more impact. But not even that, the biggest thing is like the chemistry. Yeah. We get on live together, jump on a phone call together, go out of town together. And it's like, we've been friends for 20 years. So that's what really kind of forced it. Cause you know, a lot of times, you know, somebody does something, you do something, it might work. But when y'all start blending, that's when it's really like, okay, we got to do this. Yeah, that's dope. So how were you guys able to eventually get to 800? And how do you teach people to raise their credit score? To how do you get to 800? Score? Yeah. Uh, um, basically, it's the profile, man. So a lot of people are stuck on the credit score. And that's what the mass really think about it as oh, I got a good score. I'm good. I'm lit. Um, but in reality, it's about the credit report. So what I mean by that is you have to have a well built out credit report and it has to be strongly built. So the problem is that people credit reports are too thin. So what we could do is you'd be able to get more accounts, more mm-hmm. things, you know, you know, auto loans, you know, primaries. We got pledge loans with navies. We got like stuff like self and credit strong that everybody know. But just to be able to know how to build out the credit report completely first before we actually, uh, you know, try to think about our score. Mm. But building out an 800 credit score is basically you got to have more accounts. You got to pay a lot of things on time. You got to start letting your things on your credit profile age. Mm. So that means like I can't have all these accounts on here for one month. I need to have these accounts on here for two years, three mm. years, four years. So then now we can start hitting every component on a credit score profile meter. That means that you're hitting everything that they want you to do to have a great credit score. And then you'll have an 800 credit score. Yeah. Is there ways to increase that or like speed up the age process rather than wait? Yeah. So, uh, you know, if you got like a grandma or a mom, they can add you on as authorized user to their credit card that they had open for 10, 15, 20 years. Mm. And then once they add you onto their credit card as an authorized user, now you get the benefit from all the history that they did, that they pay all those on time payments for all those years. Yeah. If you get added on as an authorized user to their credit card, you get the benefit off the history from that. And then it po- it boosts up your age history on your credit report because because that card goes into your credit report as if it's yours. Nice. Yeah. Mogul, how did you get in the self storage industry and how were you able to make tons of money in that space? I don't hear much about it. Yeah, it's, it's a hidden gem. Is it? I call it the hidden gem of real estate. Yeah. Um, so I started out in residential, just like boom, right? So I was buying two families, three families, four families. And I had a million dollar portfolio by the time I was 28 years old. I had 40 doors. Mm. Um, but as you buy more properties, then you have more tenants, you have more maintenance. There's a lot of things that come with it. And in 2020, the pandemic happened. So when the pandemic happened, a lot of people lost their jobs, right? Mm-hmm. We seen the economy take a you know downward spiral. And I had a good amount of tenants that stopped paying their rent, right? Mm-hmm. Because we couldn't evict them due to the eviction ban. You can't evict them for monetary reasons. And I was buying in low income areas, right? And I was debt heavy to be completely honest with you. I had mortgages to pay, but I wasn't getting the cash flow because some of my tenants wasn't paying their rent. So I started to think on my feet and figure out how could I make some more money. So I started selling off a lot of my properties mm. in 2020. And the crazy thing is the market was like sky high at that time. Right, right. right. People was paying twenty, thirty thousand dollars over asking price. So there's one property in particular, it was a two family and I had a tenant in there. One was vacant and the other apartment was a tenant in there. Mm. He wasn't paying his rent, but I had a buyer that offered me twenty thousand dollars more than what I was asking. Mm. He just wanted me to deliver the property vacant. So I went to the tenant. I said, hey, I want you out. You know, I'm going to give you cash for keys. So I gave him $2,000. I said, just leave. I don't care what you so owe you me. You gave him money to move out? I had to give him money to move out. Because <laughs> I knew I needed to. I had what? to. I had to figure yeah. it out, right? It's like, I'm going to have you stay here and not pay me. But I need to sell it so I can get my money back, right? So he agreed to the $2,000 to leave. But then he wanted me to put his items in the storage unit for 90 days. Okay. So while he transitioned. And I started to call a bunch of storage facilities in my area. Everything was sold out. Everything. Yeah. Was, and I'm like, I need to get on this side of the business, right? <laughs> Why is every single unit sold out? That's when I got on YouTube and Google. I started looking into self storage. I found this mastermind. I went out, paid $50,000, and I learned this whole new world of self storage. And then with the money that I flipped that property on, I used that towards buying my first facility, which was an 88 unit storage facility in Pennsylvania. And they started to just build from there. Right now, 
We got over 500 units um, right now. You know, That's so insane. We did guys, that in three years. You guys seen those storage shows where they sell them? Storage wars. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. Lit, That's bro. a real thing. That's a real yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we, like, when a tenant. I never saw that. Yeah, really? Go on YouTube, type in storage wars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People find rare stuff, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, oh, what, ha oh, what happens is um, you may have somebody that, you know, has written out a unit. God forbid somebody passed away, right? But if that person passed away, their items are just stuck in their storage unit. Right. Or um, somebody get arrested or somebody just don't pay their bills. As the owner of the self-storage, I have what we call, it's called lien laws. So mm. we put a lien on the unit. So if you don't pay us, now we're going to do an auction. Wow. So when we do the storage auction, that's when you have people that come and they buy the stuff. They buy the entire unit. Yeah, so yeah. you pay, you might pay 20, 30, 100 bucks, 200 bucks. And whatever's in that unit is yours. Have you and ever it, done that? Have you sold any? Yeah, we've I've done auctions and then um someone somebody something. buys it, but now whatever's in the unit is theirs. I don't get nothing yeah. out of it besides um whatever whatever I am owed as far as whatever that tenant owes me, I'm I'm liable to get back whatever I'm owed. But anything profit wise, it goes to the auction company and whoever buys it, they just take the items inside the unit and they go flip it. Whether it's couches. Yeah. I know I've seen people buy couches, flip it, TVs, different things that's in mm. the unit. They take yeah. it and go flip it because they get it for cheap. Yeah, it looks fun, honestly. Yeah. I know that. Yeah, yeah I, I know, know that, that one. That's a word. Yeah. You use that. You use that. <laughs> nah, that's a word. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Boone, where do you find your houses? You were able to build up a huge portfolio. How are yeah. you finding good deals? So we do it two different ways. Well, now we do it two different ways, but before we did all our stuff off market. So what we'll do is we'll go to this website. It's called onlinejobs.ph. Mm. That's where we find our virtual assistants. So mm. what a lot of people do, they do something called cold calling. Yeah. I personally don't like cold calling. Yeah. That means you get a list of 100 to 300 people and you're calling all day long. And you want to sell, you want to sell, you want to sell. So I'm big on how can we still get a lot done? It's true, say, how can we be more effective in less time? Mm. So what we did was hire some a virtual assistant and then pay them $150 for the week and they call all day long. Mm. Five days a week, 40 hours for $150 to $200 a week. You pay $200 for a little more higher end virtual yeah. assistant and 150 for like the newbies but somebody that's qualified that's been doing this for a couple of years got their resume is strong 200 dollars, and someone in english sounds like crisp right so they're calling all day long and once they go make those phone calls out of each day let's say they'll get three to five that actually do want to sell and they pass them on to me and then that's when i go ahead and actually talk to them and actually lock that property up but that's how we finding them another way you guys can do it now is by going strictly on the market mm. right now the the industry is a little slow as far as for like sellers wise but not buyers and investors mm. so when these houses sitting on the market for months and months and months that's when somebody like you can just go in and just say hey, look listen i give you 30 percent, 40 percent off of whatever you're asking for but if your house was sitting for three four months you at this point you're like shoot i'll take it or like his example his example he had a mortgage on the property so mm. he paying a thousand dollars a month like who wants to pay a thousand dollars, a thousand dollars, a thousand dollars, a thousand dollars? By month four, you like look, listen. I'd rather just take ten thousand, twenty thousand dollars off because the way it's looking, this might go another year. So I'm gonna just bite the bullet and take it out now right. versus later down. Not to mention if the economy gets worse, then I might be in a worse situation. So a lot of people just jump and ship now, which for people like me, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. I literally just got two properties under contract the other day. The same strategy. I just went to the market. And just lowball somebody and they said, look, listen, I just need this off my hands. Yeah. And you were able to buy these not even using your own money, right? You figured yeah, out how to so, use other people's money. So it's funny. Um, uh, the how, One of the houses I'm buying right now, we utilize something called hard money lenders. So hard money lenders do something called asset-based lending. Mm -hmm. So they don't necessarily care so much about you. They care about the asset. We lending off of the asset. So when you, the only catch is with hard money lenders, a lot of times they'll ask for 10 to 20% down. So if we get in the house cheap enough and the deal makes a lot of sense, like this one exact deal, I call my cousin, my little cousin, he's trying to get deeper into real estate, but he has a 780 credit score. He already has business credit and everything. So mm. the down payment we're gonna need is about 18,000. I said, hey, look, let me get you on your first deal. You you put up the 18, it's in my name as far as the lender goes, as far as experience. So he's coming through with the whole down payment. And now when the deal closes, we're gonna split the profit. Mm. So this is one of the ways that like I helped out that I got started, not got started with, but I did a lot in the beginning yeah. because my credit wasn't that good to go and get large lines of credit and all different types of things. So I would do partnerships. Like I did another deal like that where um, my cousin gave me $30,000. When everything was said and done, I made 30, exactly like 32,000. I gave him back his 30,000 and I gave him another seven grand on top. He never wow. seen the house, didn't do nothing. 
So he made seven thousand dollars for free in a couple yeah. months. Didn't do anything. A couple months? Literally, yeah, because we did the house in like four months. Do you fix and flip them, or do you just? We fixed it and then we refinanced out of it. And some of them we flipped, but nice. So now this is a way you can get involved and you don't need any money out of pocket. Just find somebody that has good credit. Yo, Smith, you have good credit. You got fifty thousand in available credit. Look, listen, we need fifteen thousand as a down payment. You bring the down payment. I'll cover the project. I'll manage the contractors. I'll do everything, and I'll get it sold. Wow. And when everything is done, I'll give you back your original 50 plus whatever we agreed on the top. No money. Now, this, no credit is being pulled. Nothing is needed from you. So this is ways people can get yeah. started without needing it, all that stuff. That's easy money, man. Uh, yeah. So what are the best banks and credit cards to, to work with if you're just getting started? Yeah, the ones we like to go to is Truist, Key Bank. My favorite one that we've been using lately is NASA. NASA? Look, NASA. Uh, but right now, the household of big lemons right now is Chase. Uh, Chase, Chase has, I don't know what they did in their system, but <laughs> Chase has uh, up the lending criteria on their business credit cards up to $150,000 on one credit Ooh, card. Yeah, Shit. I was like, bro. So now my clients is beginning to pull for like $50,000, $75,000, $100,000. Buy a house with that. <laughs> yeah, one credit yeah. card. Yeah. So that, that that one is like through the roof right now. But um you know, uh, everybody loves Navy Federal. We I've all heard love that one, Navy yeah. Federal. That's like the house for cars. Of, I heard that's a good one. House of High Limits, or for auto, you know, auto loans and things yeah. like that. Uh, another one I like is PSECU. I can go all day, but uh, once you put yourself in position to meet the requirements, man, it's like a money isn't the problem no more. Yeah. Uh, so money, money not the problem no more when it comes to the credit game. I love it. So how do you take the money on a credit card? Say it's a 50k limit. How do you take that and buy a house? Um. Okay, so I guess they got different strategies, but uh, I know it's a site that we use called Plastique is where you can pay things as wire or things like that oh, okay. with your credit card. It might take a, a little transaction fee, yeah. but uh, Plastique is a site that you can use your credit card to be able to do wires and transfers and stuff like that. I, didn't hey, I that. can piggyback off it. Um, one of the things you can ask the credit card company, they offer this yeah. without extra fees. And this is something I specifically do with one of my credit card companies it's called a balance transfer. So, you know, you got a mobile app with the check and savings and investments and everything. Yeah. All we literally do is set, like on my app, it's a visa variable rate. Like mm -hmm. that's the visa card. We just move it from the from that card and we just balance transfer to the checking account then go to the bank and then get a uh, certified check and then take that to the closing table to buy the house. That's wild. There's no, like certain banks charge fees. Yeah. And certain, like the, that's a credit union. They don't charge any fees. So I literally, I can do it right now. Shoop, shoop. Yo, just move it right wild. to the checking account. Because I got about... 400k in credit cards limits mm -hmm. i got you so for you like a business owner i put your own game of what i'm about to start setting okay. up and doing all right so a company uh we got to put our like people on payroll right yeah so uh company adp adp allows you to set up your payroll but now they're allowing you to be able to pay your payroll out from directly from a business credit card really and so now what you would do is you'll put yourself on payroll so if you're putting yourself on payroll you're paying yourself out however much money a month yeah. what you would do is have the payments come out of your business credit card that means it's getting the payment took from your business credit card but then it's transferring directly into your personal bank account cash now because hmm. you're getting paid That's out from your business Holy so <laughs> so what happens <laughs> so what happens with that is every dollar you spend on payroll even if you're paying for yourself or your employees, you actually making money while you're spending money because Bruh. you get cash back rewards or or yeah, you get or, or, or rewards points of every dollar you spend. But then also you're liquidating the credit card. And now you can use that money in your personal bank account to be able to go. Dude, what's that site? It's called ADP. ADP. Bruh. So ADP. I'm yeah. Setting that up when I get home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah just put them on. Game. That's one. That's one of the new yeah. ones that nobody putting telling people about. How do you yeah. guys use your points? You got uh, millions of points. Right? Yeah. Right now, I think I'm at like nine hundred thousand. Which Damn. is equivalent to like nine nine thousand dollars. Okay. Uh, one of the cool things I'm about to do with my rewards points is I'm gonna be the first person to make a video about this too. Uh, uh, I don't take my idea when this video drops. <laughs> I'm gonna buy a vehicle, full out cash off my credit card rewards points. Oh. I'm gonna go buy a ten thousand dollar car off my rewards points. That's strict smart. like like strictly off free money just by because I run my life through my credit card instead of spending cash. Yeah. Mm. Strictly off of that, I'm gonna be able to buy a ten thousand dollar car. Of my rewards point. Yeah. Going back to the self storage, how much money would you say you need to get started? Because you got to buy the whole building, right? Yeah, that's pretty expensive. It, yeah, oh, it varies based upon like where you buying, right? So it's like any real estate. If you buy in, you know, California, LA, right? The price is gonna be higher. You buy in New York. So for me, we like to go for like sub sub markets or okay. rural markets. So I invest in Pennsylvania, um, Ohio, Milwaukee, like certain areas where it's sub markets and we get cheaper. So yeah, for example, we just purchased three facilities. You pay eight hundred and fifty thousand for it, right? 
Um, those facilities are worth 1.5 million. I mm. think just as is, just by acquiring it. However, uh, we utilize SBA, so Small Business Administration. Yeah. There's a loan. It's called the SBA 7A loan, and that loan is specifically for small business owners that are looking to go buy businesses. So self storage is not only commercial real estate; it's a small business, mm. which is why it qualifies for the 7A loan. But the cool thing about the 7A is that they only require you to come to the table with 10% down. So an $850,000 facility, down payment is only $85,000. Wow. So when we get with Smitty and he get us $100,000, 85000 in credit cards and credit lines, liquidate, right? Because we just talked about it. Now that I can use that as my down payment. And now I just purchase a self-storage with no money out of my pocket. Yo. Yeah. <laughs> that's nuts. And so then you got money coming in monthly from the rent, right? Well, let's not. I, I want to give you some more. I want to give you some more game. Let's okay, okay. You, right. So we purchase the self storage facility with no money out of our pocket. We make money off the rents, right? Yeah. By renting out the units. But the reason why I love self storage even more is because we can make multiple streams from one acquisition. Hmm. So not only do we make money off the rents, we actually make money off insurance. Hmm. So every tenant that rents out a unit is mandatory for you to sign up for insurance. So that if there's a flood or if there's a fire, we're not responsible, and you don't have to go in your pocket. But we have a vested partnership with the insurance company where we get paid 30 to 50 percent commission off the insurance bill every single month. Wow. So now we get paid. Also, we partner with U-Haul. So as a tenant, you know, rents out a unit, they may need transportation services. Yeah. So we have U-Haul come in and they run the transportation business off the facility. I don't manage it. I don't run it. They do the entire thing, but they give us 30 percent commission. Right. And I could go on. Also. Right. So I'm going to give you two more. Right. <laughs> no, there's uh, run it. Holy we God. also partner with the local moving company because a tenant that rents out a unit and they get transportation nine times out of ten, they need to hire some movers. Right. So we have a preferred moving company that we work with and we send all of our business to them and they give us 30 percent commission. Mm. And then we partner with the local vending machine company, put two vending machines, three vending machines, depending on how big the facility is. But the vending company is responsible for filling up the machines with snacks or drinks, making sure the product is not expired, collecting the cash and give us 30%, right? So now we're able to make money multiple times off this one acquisition, and then now we're generating more revenue That's out of that insane. facility. insane, man. With no money down on our pocket. With nothing down. This is mind-blowing. Crazy. I mean, literally right. nothing down, and you're making five streams of income. Yeah. That's yeah, crazy. Man. With interest rates so high, how are you guys adapting that in the real estate space? So um, basically, like what I said earlier, just going ahead and attacking these properties, but going in more discount. But um, also, I want to I want to piggyback on that, but tap on something he said earlier as far as, because I don't want people to think like, oh, man, every situation is going to be bad as far as like tenant-wise, which mm -hmm. it does get rough. But it's things that we're doing now to kind of combat that. Mm. So one of the things we're doing right now when it comes to tenants, we instead of just getting a traditional tenant, this is what we've been doing literally the last three, four months. We're going to different sites. So right now I'm using Furnish Finders. And I'm using VRBO. Mm. So VRBO is like Airbnb. Yeah. So now, but you got to do a 30-day stay. So you're getting a month-to-month -month tenant. So right now we have in three of our apartments, we do furnished finders in two of them and three three other apartments. And I wanted to test it. I've been doing like two at a time. Mm -hmm. Now we're about to max that out even more. But with three of our apartments, they're literally back-to-back -back booking. So we got somebody that's paying like, for example, somebody in the cash outs come right out like this one is 5400 this for three months just for one a one bedroom apartment because they pay more than the regular rent would be so now somebody in the air um, vrbo pays you out ahead of time oh, and it's insured you get it all up front yeah wow. so now they're still in there for the three months but the 5400 came out already yeah yeah hit the account so now it's insured everything is situated and i know a lot of people are like oh but the unit has to be furnished what we did was we're reaching out to a lot of people that have Airbnbs. They've been getting shut down recently. Mm. We're going like all the ones that all my furnished units. I literally went to people that have Airbnb units that's getting shut down. Y'all get two grand for the whole apartment. Mm. Tables, chairs, beds, sofas, cups, plates. And that's what I've been doing. We just been <laughs> literally buying some of my old stuff for $2,000. I think one apartment I paid $3,000 for this stuff. Wow. Furnished the whole thing. That That's place y'all stayed at, we got game consoles and everything. Yeah. Paid three grand for the whole apartment. <laughs> the whole thing. That's crazy. And then put it right up on the site. So that's yeah. how we kind of manage the things right now. That's cool to see you pivoted because I heard Airbnb uh, owners are struggling right now. Yeah. So we're doing a VRBO or furnished finders. That's when somebody just basically, a traveling nurse, 
They're coming in a different type of clientele, a different type of mindset. They're already working. Also, on top of that, they don't want to get messed up on their situation. So it's a better, yeah, it's a better playing field. Yeah, Kenny, what are this, this, oh, I wanted to add to the interest part, right? I yeah. want you to talk about the interest rate because um, a lot of people get scared about real estate when they think yeah. about interest. But it's actually as a buyer, if you know what you're doing, this is a better time because. Yeah. Being at the interest to hire, people can't sell their properties for, certain, for for the money that they thought they could because the banks are not financing for that amount because right? your mortgage payment is much higher now, right? So you actually have more motivated sellers where I can negotiate and get the prices down even cheaper. Mm. So this self storage, we actually you know got to have price essentially, right? And we know that okay, we're making money even at an interest rate of nine percent, which that's mm. the interest, which is crazy. But when the interest rates go down, which it will at some point. We're going to be even more profitable. Right. So the way to beat interest is just truly finding a great deal and still getting at a good price and making money on it. And when mm. it works itself out, you're still going to make money later on when you do refinance out or whatever strategy you implement. Yeah, I got something even better. Yeah, okay. Right going. With the interest rate, I just thought about something. Dang, you, this is right. This is off record, but when the interest rate is 9%, right, the interest rate is eventually going to go down. We don't know when, but it, it goes up and go down. It's a yeah. part of the game. So does the does the number the monthly cash flow and the monthly mortgage payment make sense right now? Yes, makes sense right now. So, mm-hmm. let's say the interest rates drop down to five percent, four percent, the value of the building goes up. Mm-hmm. He can refinance and pull a couple hundred thousand dollars out of the building mm. at the new interest rate. But now because he pulled money out, the the uh, the the monthly mortgage payment is going to be higher. But because the interest rate is lower, it's just going to match up with what the rate is now. Mm. So now he's going to be able to pull a couple hundred thousand dollars out of the building right now and still have the same. Let's say his thing is five thousand dollars a month. Mm. It's still going to stay the same because he pulled a couple hundred thousand out at five percent. Yeah. Mm. But it's the number that makes sense now. So if the number that makes sense now, he's going to be able to pull out all that money and still cash flow. So it's going to be like, I don't say free money. That's a bad excuse. Somebody take this and run with it. But essentially. <laughs> Essentially, Damn. it is. That's mm-hmm. insane because you put zero down and now you're able to take out six figures as on a refi. As soon as the market changes, you're going to make it. Boom. Yeah. Might be able to put like three, four hundred thousand. That's a blueprint, man. Easy. Yeah. That's a blueprint. Yeah. So, one of the things you do is credit funding. Yeah. So, um, if you come to me and you got an LLC, you got a business and you don't know how to get funded, all right, well, let's give you a done for you service. We'll get you the funding for you. Mm. Uh, but we have requirements you have to meet. So, we got like, you know, 700 credit score, no negative items. You already got to have two credit cards that have been opened up for a year to have five thousand dollar limits. Mm. This will put you in a position where you can go get the uh, you know max amount of funding. We can go get you upwards two hundred thousand, two hundred thousand. If you uh, have all that, you could get a hundred k. Yeah, you got an LLC. No matter if the LLC is brand new, one day old, as long as you established and properly sh- LLC mm-hmm. with a good credit report, we take the combination with the business with a good credit report, and we go. What I do is called business credit card stacking methods or lines of credit stacking methods. And we'll be able to accumulate you a large amount of money by stacking up different credit cards from different banks. So could people just open up LLCs every day and just get credit? Yeah, you can open up an LLC every 24 hours. Also, I got a friend right now. I believe my friend has 72 LLCs. <laughs> so um, so you that's got, 77 million credit he has? Uh, I mean, he can get, essentially, he can get funded in any biz, each business. So if he really technically wanted to sit down, get business number one funded, two, three. Yeah. He can really go get all his business funded and be able to accumulate literally largest amount of money. So the cool thing about credit is it's to infinity. Yeah, there is no cap to how much credit you can get. Like literally, people I think that's go over some people head that it's to infinity, but it's literally no cap. All like let's just say we get ten credit cards. They all mm-hmm. got ten thousand dollar limits. We got a hundred thousand dollars. In two years, they all raised mm. from ten thousand to twenty thousand. Mm-hmm. In another two years, they all raised from twenty thousand to thirty thousand. It's literally to infinity. So you could keep going with like a million bucks. Yeah, yeah. So what? you can easy. Yeah, hundred percent. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I love credit. Yeah, I know Amex. I've seen some crazy like someone oh, spend like two hundred k on a swipe. Yeah, Don't yeah. So those those that. is called. Yeah. We, we got yeah. what's called no preset limit American Express business credit card. So that means yeah. that's deadly, bro. Yeah, over time, <laughs> whenever you spend it, the more you spend on, the more they'll give available to you. So yeah. you can up your limits. Of, you know, I seen some. The highest limit I seen was like. Uh, nine hundred thousand. That yeah, someone I can see swipe six hundred. I thought yeah. that was high. Yeah, a uh, guy in my mentorship group. Uh, you seen him? Uh, Scott. Scott. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. And he got he got four of them at the yeah. limit too. He four four different American Express credit cards at like eight to nine hundred thousand dollars limits. I mean, he can literally go spend like 
two point something million dollars. Spend all of that and retire. Leave the country. You got to pay it back, but but that's why that's why he said flee to sea. Yeah, he said flee to sea. So well, yeah, that's tempting. But that's why you come to you know what we got set up, which is we got a five day challenge with us called Fund Your Freedom, and then that. We can give you a blueprint where you can take that money that you can get access to, but then we can invest it to the right places where you can either make money off that money and pay that money mm-hmm. back mm-hmm. and even get access to more money once you pay it back. So once they see that you trust it, they see that you're going to pay us back, they extend you more money mm-hmm. and we keep investing and we just repeat this cycle, yeah, man. We just, cycle. we're not trying to invent something new. We we want to just go with what's working already. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. Just go with what's working, you know, and do it until drill it until that thing is making you a millionaire, you know. Man, I like your model because all of you guys, it seems like it's low risk like yeah. you're using other people's money other people's credit you're not really risking too you gotta much gotta be smart own. we gotta be smart gotta be you know smart. what i mean it could be yeah. risky if you're doing stupid stuff <laughs> right but if, if you lose it, the money then yeah. it's you, you also it's like people can get started that's yeah, the biggest facts. thing like we all come together to help people get started because he always said it's easy to get a hundred thousand in funding versus saving a hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars like if i say yo i got this great property it's a great deal you know we need a hundred thousand to buy it mm-hmm. and then you're like okay I'm going to say the house is going now. Yeah. <laughs> the, house, the house is going. It's going yeah. tomorrow. It's worth 200. I'm selling for 100. It's going now. Yeah, yeah. But off a swipe or off a couple swipes, and then I hate to say it's worth a swipe, but off a couple credit card move transactions. But also, just to piggyback on what he said, you know, ha- having access to the credit, but also for people that don't have high credit, credit right now, you can do partnerships. Mm. Like when I tell y'all my credit was shot, I figured everything out. When you go ahead and do partnership, add somebody that has a high credit score in the LLC, now the LLC is going to get funded, mm. but now they're only using, utilizing that person's credit score. So if you have an 800, I have a 500. Mm-hmm. Hey, look, listen, we have an LLC together, but let's get this LLC funded. We're going to put you in an operating agreement higher than me. Some some banks, I've done it as where we just put you first on the application. They didn't even pull my credit. Mm. So we didn't even change the operating agreement just on the app. We literally put you down first. They ran your credit. And your credit was so good, they didn't even need to go to the next name on the app. Yeah. We got twenty thousand dollar credit card just wow. like that. Yeah. So when I tell you this for people, I don't want people to watch this and like, well, I don't have an eight hundred, so let me just not watch this. Like while you're working on your credit, mm-hmm. you can still make things happen now. You yeah, just gotta yeah. be real creative. Okay, who can I partner with? Who can I do this? Who who has available credit can lend to me so I can buy this house or what can we come together and partner and you go first on the application? So many different things like that. I want to add to it as well, because I know a lot of people may be watching. They may not have the best credit, right? Yeah. If you do have great credit, yes, you can go and get the capital. But we also have ways where you can get money even with bad credit. Right. Mm -hmm. So we teach different backdoor methods and strategies on how to go out there. So, you know, I'll give I'll give an example. Right. So one of these these new lenders it's called fintech companies mm-hmm. so these companies are giving out capital to business owners based upon transaction history based mm-hmm. upon banking habits so they're not looking at your credit profile they're not looking at your credit report they're mm-hmm. looking at how much revenue or how much transactions how many deposits do you have coming in and out of your bank account right. over the last 60 to 90 days so for me this is actually what i've done and this is how i when i was working at a nine to five i was working at pepsi and i utilized my job and my job helped me actually buy my first six unit apartment building. And what I did was I went on my direct deposit form online yeah. and I just put my business account so that when I get paid every Friday, mm-hmm. it would go into my business account versus my personal. Wow. So it was already being taxed already, you know, but now that, that money, instead of it going to my personal, is in my business. But yeah, guess yeah. what? I'm showing transaction history every single Friday for 90 days straight. Smart. Now I have that transaction history in my business I go to a company like Blue Vine, right, or Headway Capital, and now they approve me for forty-five, fifty thousand dollars. Showed my credit, but now I got fifty thousand dollars, and now I use that as a down payment on an apartment building. The apartment building I purchased it for one hundred and eighty-five thousand mm-hmm. dollars, right, and now it's cash flow. And That's I did that sick. with with showing no credit, even though I had mm-hmm. decent credit, I didn't even show it. I just leveraged these different strategies, but I'm, I'm sharing it because I don't want anybody to count themselves out. Yes. That's why we put together this virtual conference to show you uh, multiple ways that you have good credit, bad credit. It don't matter. You just got to want it. Like, do you dope. really want to change your life? And that's all that matters. And we're going to help you get into that next step. Love that. Where yeah. can people find you guys? Yeah. So I'm on uh, everything at Smitty the Goat and on Instagram at underscore Smitty the Goat and on YouTube at Smitty the Goat. I'm on Instagram, Mogul Lifestyle underscore. And on Instagram, D-S-B-O-O-N-E. Oh, yeah. Thanks for coming on, guys. I learned a lot. Sure. We're going to use some and, of this. And everybody, really quick. Um, let's fund your freedom.com. 
Next yeah, I'll put it in the description. Perfect. Yeah, so they that's one you're bringing back on. And we got, uh, we always got a cool ticket that we like to promote versus uh, the platinum ticket. We advise everyone to go platinum. Mm. Platinum is like, uh, if you if you want a VIP premium, member, premium. Premium, okay, you, you want to be extra line, you want to get top extra calls, extra Q and A, personalized with us, and things like that. Extra uh, get access to like we got a private group set up for them, and like, we could be in Telegram stuff like that. So we got some extra bonuses for people that if you join platinum, you're gonna be a tip top service with us. <laughs> All right, join yeah. platinum, guys. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Thanks for coming on, guys. All right. See you next time.